So we don't have any Madunga player. Huh? So we'll we only have three. So we I'll do we'll do the Mangala Charana for the opening. You know the Mangala Charana? Some of them. Some. Okay. <clears throat> It's successive. When you understand the Mangala Charana, you'll see it's successive. It starts with prayers to the previous spiritual masters, then the spiritual masters, then the Lord, and then Lord, Ch and then Lord Chaitanya, and then the principal deities in Vrindavan, then Radharani, and then, then the holy, then the holy name. Mm -hmm. Should we have kirtan or should we do uh, Mangala Charana? A few. I, I was just looking for a Madanga player. If you play Madanga, I'll do kirtan. Otherwise, we can do Mangala Charana. Okay. Okay, we'll do that. That's appropriate. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Let's see, we started off with five last night and we got up to about 10 or 11. Let's see what we can do tonight. Any more? The Pajaris are Wanted to get counted too. Okay. So. <clears throat> Jai Rad Ham Madhava Kunn Jabi Hari Jai. Ragham Madhava Kunjabi Hari Edaya Gopitana Vallabam Girivar Dahi Edaya Jaya Gopi Janavalnava Kirivara Dhanhari Sodhanandana Bhraja Janahanjanaya Jasodhanandana Raja Dhanahan Janai Jamuna Dhira Havana Chahi Jamuna Dhira Havana Chahi Hai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kunjabi Head high, go pee, Janaval, Gary Farah, down here. Head high, go pee, Janaval, Gary Farah, down here. Gary. 
सौरनंदन भजन हंध्याय सौरनंदन भजन हंध्याय यसौरनंदन भजन हंध्याय जम्मून थियरा है भाहियों जम्मून थियरा है भार चाहियम हे ढाय राधाम कुंज बिहारिया जाय पंच 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 जाय पंच 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 हाय घोर हरि भरि भरि भोर हरि भाय जाय प्रभु भभु भे प्रभु भाय प्रभु भ Mataji, can you give me a Ajman cup? You know, yeah. near this, some water. Mm-hmm. Okay, here, yeah, just put it right on there. Thank you. Perfect. This translation here is it's different than the one I remember. Let's see if it's the same in the yeah, same in this book here. The original Gita is different, but anyway. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Avyakta shara ikyuktas Tanahur paramam gatim Yam prapyana nivartante Taddama paramam mama Avyakta ushara ikyuktas Tanahu paramam gati Yam prapyana nivartante Tadama paramam mama Avyakta shara ikyuktas Tanahur paramam gatin Yam prapyana nivartante 
Tadama Paramam Mama Ladies, Avyakta unmanifested. Aksara, infallible, iti, thus, yukta, is said, tam, that ahu, is known, paramam, the ultimate, katim, destination, yam, which, prapya, gaining, na, Never nivartante come back tat that dhamma abode paramam supreme mama my translation so this verse is connected with the previous verse these two verses are practically the same but there are certain details that are different Translation, that which the Vedantists describe as unmanifested and unf infallible, that which is known as the supreme destination, that place from which, having attained it, one never returns, that is my supreme abode. Hmm. So in the, in the previous verse, the Lord talks about the same thing. One is it's manifested or unmanifested. This time he uses infallible. And then he says also it's never annihilated. Um, and he said it's the supreme destination. It's eternal. When you go there, you do not return. That is my supreme abode. In other words, there's nothing higher. Purport. The supreme abode of the personality of Godhead Krishna is described in Brahma Samhita as Chintamani Dham, a place where all desires are fulfilled. So this point is very ins instructive, or you might significant. Uh, everyone is trying to fulfill desires, and desires are the principle of life. Because you have desire, you are living. If you have no desires, it means you are not living. Desire is a symptom of life. And of course, there's two types of desires, and then there's a mixture of both of these. The two types are desire for happiness in this world, and the other one is desire for happiness in the spiritual world. And the mixture is whatever way you can mix these two desires. In other words, in proportion. Sometimes we go back and forth between the material and the spiritual trying to fulfill our desires. So there's a mixture. <clears throat> but unless desires are fulfilled, 
one doesn't feel satisfied or happy because everyone is trying to satisfy desire. Um, desire is a symptom of life. Desire is a, is a principle of uh, consciousness. Fulfillment of desires is the goal of life. Material, but we mistake in our desires as being something that we can achieve in this world. But in this world, no one can fulfill desires because <clears throat> things are always temporary and changing and full of misery. And our desires are something that we want to, something we want satisfaction, happiness, some type of gain, success. So there is a place where all your desires can be fulfilled completely, and Krishna says that's his abode. It's called Chintamani Dham. Uh, that supreme abode of Krishna, known as Goloka Vrindavan, is full of palaces made of touchstone. There are also trees called desire trees that supply any type of edible upon demand. And there are cows known as sarabi cow, which can supply limitless supply of milk. In this abode, the Lord is served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune, Lakshmi's. And he is called Govinda, the primeval Lord and the cause of all causes. Ishvara Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karna. Now this refers to the first verse in the Brahma Samhita. The Lord is accustomed to blow his flute. Veno Kukwandantam. His, his flute, when he blows his flute, mm, things happen that are unexplainable. The gopis' hair gets loosened, their clothes get loose. The rivers flow in the opposite direction. The trees, the hairs on the trees or the branches of the trees stand straight up in ecstasy. Um, uh, the cows become stunned and can't move. These are all symptoms of when Krishna blows his flute. In fact, his flute is his major weapon. He charms everyone from his flute. He gets whatever he wants from his flute. <laughs> if he wants something to happen, he simply blows his flute. And the flute sound makes everything desirable for him. So his flute is not just simply a musical instrument that he uses. It's a way of showing love to others and bringing love to himself. And it's also a way of, of capturing the attention of all living entities completely and perfectly. The flute playing that we hear in this world may sound good. Sometimes we see a person is known as a great flutist, flautist sometimes they say, right? And they play and everybody claps. But it's, it's really nothing compared to Krishna's flute. In fact, and those of you who know the Gayatri Mantra, the Gayatri Mantra is the sound of Krishna's flute. <laughs> the, f the first line in the Gayatri Mantra, which is the Gayatri actually, is the sound of Krishna's flute. So Krishna's flute is so... Uh, uh, versatile in spiritual uh, services <laughs> does so much. Venum kavantam aravinda dalaya taksam parbaravam samaditam buddha sungarangam kantapa gotika maniya vichesa sobam govinda mari buddhasham tamaham bhajami. His transcendental form is most attractive in all the worlds. His eyes are like lotus petals, and the color of his body is like the color of cupids. He's like the color of clouds, I'm sorry. He is so attracted that his beauty excels thousands of cupids. He wears saffron cloth, a garland around his neck, and a peacock feather in his hair. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives only a small head of his personal blow, Goloka Vrindavan, which is the supermost planet in the spiritual kingdom. 
A vivid description is given in the Brahma Simhita. Vedic literatures, Kathi Upanishads state there is nothing superior to the abode of the Supreme Lord and that abode and that the abode is the ultimate destination, Purusham Nam Param Kinshit Sakastya Paramam Gati. So Krishna's um, this this purport we, we just read describes that verse from the Venung kantam para ravinda valaya taksam ka, what is it? Kararavamba, what is it? Babitam buddha sungarangam garba goti kamani avishesha sobham govinda mari purusham tamaham bhajami Alola Chandra Kavatara Vanaya Vamsi Ratna Bhagali Savitara Bhisayam San, what is it? That's the next verse, I can't. But here it's mentioned, and it's very significant, that if you want to know what the supreme world is like, the spiritual world, the descriptions in the Brahma Samhita. The Brahma Samhita, we don't usually give classes on the Brahma Samhita, and we find very few people talk about the Brahma Samhita. But because it's so deep and so full of nectar, um, it is very difficult to speak. Of course, Prabhupada did mention that anyone who gives a, a class should mention at least one verse from the Brahma Samhita in every class they give. So that's interesting because the Brahma Samhita takes you from a very detailed description of the spiritual world which is in the very beginning and then starts to describe Krishna. After it describes Krishna, then it describes the Vaikuntha realm. After the Vaikuntha realm, it describes uh, the personalities, the glories of the great personalities, and then it goes into the material realm. So Brahma Samhita is very successive in describing coming from the highest all the way down to the last verse in Brahma Samhita before you get to the concluding narration of the, of the description of the spiritual world. Now it's a very... Uh, detailed and very intricate and very sweet and deep scripture. I've only known one person in the entire ISKCON society who has given a seminar on the entire Brahma Samhita, and that was His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami. In 1990, he gave a series of lectures Mataji, please sit in the chair if it's more comfortable for you. You, you. I know you're a yogi, right? So it doesn't matter. Right? But if you feel uncomfortable, because if you're comfortable, you can concentrate. If you're not comfortable, that concentration becomes hard. Um, yeah, and in 1990, he gave a series of lectures on every verse. And in 1991, he did it again. First time he did it in in Mayapur, and the second time he did it in Vrindavan. And you know, when you do something the second time, you always do it better. So the Vrindavan lectures are really powerful. Both of them are powerful, though. So, uh, so this this scripture is really, really an amazing. It's worth studying, worth reading. Of course, we have, I think, uh, uh, Ananta Prabhu is looking at it right now, right? Is that it? Brahma Samhita? Yeah, Brahma Samhita, yeah. So in that book, yeah, you can see really intricate explanations of these verses using very high English to describe the details. And that's Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's explanation. <clears throat> but Prabhupada, after describing this one verse in detail, he says, because this verse gives a nice overriding description, 
There are palaces made of touchstone. So when you, a touchstone is a desire stone, there used to be a touchstone in this world at one time, but now this world doesn't have any touchstones. A touchstone is you take it and you put it on any metal and that metal turns to gold. That's what a touchstone is. Sanatana Goswami had one one time, but he threw it away because he found that the holy name is better than the touchstone. <laughs> So that's the only indication of anything on this planet. So palaces are made of touchstone. And there are trees called desire trees. And you can get anything you want from these trees at any time. It's like going to a supermarket and you have one tree, it's a whole supermarket. <laughs> and you don't have to pay for anything. <laughs> it's all free. <laughs> And the tree it is not only giving it to you, but can't wait for you to ask for it, and just wants a supply. So there's trees like that. This is not something fictitious, this is real. <clears throat> there are cows who can give you unlimited supplies of milk simply on demand. Krishna is surrounded by all these beautiful ladies. They're called goddesses of fortune. There are hundreds and thousands of them. And it's described, they clean the palaces in the, uh, in the spiritual world, but there's no dust, so they just clean anyway. Because it's their service to clean, because everything's already clean, but still they clean. <laughs> yeah, it's described like that. <clears throat> and Krishna's playing on his flute, we mentioned a little bit about that. His form is so attractive that any, any his eyes are like lotus petals. The color of his body is like a is like clouds, blackish blue clouds. His beauty excels thousands of cupids. If you could see Cupid, you would faint. But if you can see thousands of cupids in one place, you would die, not just faint. <laughs> He wears saffron cloth. His, his neck is garland with a beautiful garland, peacock feather in his hair. And uh, this is a small little indication from that one verse what the spiritual world like is like. The spiritual world it says that all speaking is singing, all walking is dancing, and the constant sound is Krishna's flute. When I was living in Nurindavan, we would have to travel from temple to temple within the community, and we'd have to go through the hills. And there was one temple that we named Vrindavan, and that was the one that was hidden in the most secluded place in the woods, up on a little hill. And that's where the brahmachari stayed. First it was a brahmacharini ashram, and then the brahmacharis took over. And then, um, but when we used to walk that trail, there would always be a sign, and I would see it all the time. Vrindavan, where all talking is singing, all walking is dancing, and the constant companion is the flute. <laughs> We'd see that sign all the time. Like that. <clears throat> when one attains the spiritual world, he never returns to this material world. Can you come back? Yes, but you don't. <laughs> That's what Krishna is saying. Once you fall, you generally only fall once. Of course, some souls come again on behalf of the Lord to do the work of the Lord. So they're not under the influence of karma, nor do they fall. They're just coming as a messenger, a messenger of compassion. But once you fall and you're back in the spiritual world, you still have your independence. Your independence is not lost at any time. You will remain an individual soul 
whether you are liberated or whether you are conditioned. But in the liberated state, uh, e, you still have your independence and you can come back to the material world if you so desire, but you won't, you just won't. Because you know what a miserable place it is. It's like once you put your hand in the fire, the fire burns. And then you know, I'm not putting my hand there anymore. So once, once you come to the material world and realize what it means to suffer, and once you somehow or other overcome that with your strong devotion, turn to the spiritual world, now you won't make that mistake again and want to come to this place. Even if it's Ljubljana, I know it's nice, but still, you still won't want to come. <laughs> so that's, that's and even that's why Krishna says you don't come back. Hmm. Krishna's supreme abode and Krishna himself are non-different, hmm. being the same in quality. On this earth, Vrindavan, 90, 90 miles southeast of Delhi, is a replica of the supreme Goloka Vrindavan located in the spiritual sky. When Krishna descended on this earth, he sported on that particular tract of land known as Vrindavan, comprising about 84 square miles in the district of Mathura, India. So it appears to be a material location, but Vrindavan is not... It's not located in this material world, but it appears to be. Over the Dham, there is a covering of material energy. And those who are not pure are associating with the covering. But those who are pure, they can see beyond the covering and actually see the Chintamani nature of the Dham. I'm speaking about the Dham in the material world. So when you go to Vrindavan in this world, if you have transcendental vision, although you see pigs and dogs and dirt, um, you don't really see that because that's just the covering is over the Dham. The Dham is not affected by that. But Kali Yuga is so strong that the coverings over the holy Dhams in this age is so strong that it's very difficult even for great spiritualists to penetrate beyond these external coverings. <clears throat> but their spiritual vision. I see everybody's tired today, maybe because the speaker's tired too. <laughs> when the speaker's tired, he puts everybody to sleep. <laughs> Sabina, is that a meditation or are you, or are you just, I think she's gone. Oh, okay. I thought you were practicing yoga, no. <laughs> So, okay. So, yeah, in this, in this material realm of the spiritual manifestation, which is called uh, avyakta, manifested. Avya, in avyakta, vyakta means manifested, avya means unmanifested. So Krishna manifests his dham. But when he leaves the material world, and goes back to the spiritual world, that same Dham becomes unmanifested. And just like they say, um, you, if you go to Vrindavan, you can see Krishna's pastimes in many of the places. In fact, there's one place which is called Seva Kunj. Seva Kunj is a place that you don't go at night. You just don't go. Because Krishna is dancing with his uh, gopis. And even people who are not so advanced, if they go there, they can see that. But if they do, they don't come back. And they don't go to the spiritual world either. <laughs> in other words, Krishna is still having his private rasa dance in Vrindavan Dham, but on an unmanifested platform. But still, because it's such a powerful, just like in that prayer to Damodar, we'll be coming up to 
Kartik, the Dhammadarastika. In the last verse, in the last uh, line of that last verse, it talks about Krishna's unlimited pastimes. So what is it referring to? Krishna is referring to the rasa dance, which is the king of all pastimes. There's where Krishna excels himself in loving relationships. Uh, that loving relationship is at the at the height of Krishna's ex, uh, uh, Krishna's prowess, and the gopis are all, the only match for Krishna's love, and it's a really amazing pastime. But even now, in this uh, material existence, those pastimes are still going on. So if anyone goes to Seva Kunjan at night, they don't come back. <laughs> They're not supposed to see what they're seeing, they see. <laughs> it's guarded by monkeys, so a lot of times the monkeys keep people away. But still, sometimes people won't get curious, and that's the last thing they do. They're not, everyone knows, don't go and save a coons at night. <laughs> so, yeah, so Krishna's pastimes are vyakta and avyakta, manifested and unmanifested. But either way, they're eternally existing. They're always existing like that. So, uh, here it's described in the spiritual world, they're constantly manifested. And therefore, the idea is to purify yourself and go back to the spiritual world. Hmm. And the Brahma Samhita will give you a very detailed explanation of the spiritual world of Krishna and some of his intimate associates just to inform you what is the nature of that realm but at the same time attract you to want to go back to the material spiritual world in this world no one can have a perfect relationship with anyone it's like some of the most wonderful love stories in the history of our, uh, you know, literature that is available. They end in tragedy. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, what happened? They both committed suicide. They both. Everyone says that's so nice, you know, Romeo and Juliet. So in this world, <clears throat> we may find some relationship on this level. But we can know it's not as perfect, nor can it ever be as perfect as our relationship with Krishna. Because Krishna is the perfect husband. He's the perfect lover. He's also the perfect friend, the perfect child. So everyone can have a relationship with Krishna as we have relationships in this world with people on this level. But in that relationship, it's perfect. Thank you for coming. You're going for yoga? Huh? I can't hear you. Hmm? You're meeting a friend? Oh, different kind of training. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming to our training class. <laughs> so yeah. That's the, so the spiritual world is is unimaginable by material calculations and any form of calculations. So we can hear about it, we can read about it, and we can aspire for it. Like that. So, and it's it's the birthright. You are just you are qualified to receive the the mercy of returning to the spiritual world because that is where you started from. We all left home. It's like we left home and we're wandering around. 
We don't know who our father is. We don't know where our happiness can be found. We're poverty stricken. We're going from place to place looking for something to, for, to satisfy us. But if you go back to your home, just like sometimes when you're on a journey, even in this world, uh, you sometimes you travel so much and then you come back to your home, you think, oh, so nice. You go to your room and you sit there and you're peaceful and everything feels good. So that's a material example. So in the same way, once we return back to the spiritual world, we will think, oh, there's nothing better than this. <laughs> And Krishna, as we mentioned before, Krishna wants us back more than we want to go back. So he has to trick us. Just like the example is a, a child who is sick and the father is trying to give medicine, but the medicine's bitter. So he mixes it with some sugar candy to make it taste good. And then the child can take it. Otherwise, we don't want to go back because we feel like this. So Krishna tries to make makes it sweet by somehow or other, attracting our minds in some way or other. So we want we start to desire to go back. As Prabhupada said, very few souls in this world want to go back to Godhead. But if you do, Krishna becomes eager, and he helps you to do those things or to develop the right mood where you can again return into the spiritual world. The key is to develop an attraction for hearing and chanting Krishna's glories. We have Krishna's pastimes in the Bhagavatam. We have Lord Chaitanya's pastimes in, in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Char Chaitanya Bhagavat. Chaitanya Mangala, all the pastimes of the Lord, the activities of the Lord, which are just so full of nectar. They're rasavai sal, they're full of sweetness, charm the minds, charm the hearts. So we should adopt a regular principle of hearing Krishna's pastimes, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, every day. We have so much service to do, and that's nice. But our real service is to become a lover of Krishna. <laughs> so our service is meant to, to we're, that's a way to show our love for Krishna. Our service is a, meant, a way to show our love for Krishna. But if our service doesn't bring us to that, then we have to understand what we need to do. And most of the time it's just more hearing and chanting about Krishna's pastimes in a direct way, right from scripture. And of course the Acharyas, the Goswamis especially, have written so much, so many books on the pastimes of the Lord. Rupa Goswami's Ujwala Nilamani, Sanatha Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, <clears throat> Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, what else? Uh, Raghunath Das Goswami's, uh, uh, what was it? The, the Pearl Pastime, you know that one? You know that pastime with the pearls? That's sweet. Krishna competes with the gopis. And so, and who else? Yeah, those are the four Goswamis that were mostly wrote about Krishna's leelas like that. And of course, we have so much tattva to support the leela to, to give us deeper understanding of the meanings of the leelas like that. Yeah, so... Go back home. Do stop, stop your roaming, and look for your homing. Oh, anything else? Uh, what's, what would be a good? Let's come up with some rhyme. 
I'm wandering around in the dome. I don't know where to roam. I'm looking for my home, but I cannot find it because I'm all alone. <laughs> Something like that. So we want to, yeah, we want to make this place short and return back. Now there are other there's devotees who want to come back and preach. That's also glorious. But before you can do that, you have to purify yourself, where you can qualify to go back home, and then Krishna will engage you in preaching work if that's your desire. Mm -hmm. Panchatattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarubakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam Ajanu Lambita Bhuja Okanakam Vatato Sankirtanai Papitaro Kamalaya Taksa Vishwambaro Dvijabaro Yuga Dharma Falo Vande Jagatpriya Karo Karuna Avataro Vande Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando Sanodido Karodaya Pushpanvanto Chitta Sando Tamonudo. Just like uh, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are like the sun and the moon rising over the horizon of Gaudiya to give light in this age of Kali. Um, Pancha was it? Uh, one day Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando Seno Dido. This is Bengali. Gorodaya Pushpanvanto Chitta Sando Tamonudo. So there is a moon and there is a sun. Lord Chaitanya is like the cooling moon and Lord Chaitanya is like the blazing sun. Both give light, both give nourishment, both give happiness. So, in using that analogy, they're compared to the, the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? Mm. I don't know who to choose first. So many hands are raised. <laughs> We'll take you in alphabetical order. Okay, Anant is first. His name starts with an... No, wait a minute. Alex is first. A-L is before A-N. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just changing Vaishnava etiquette accordingly. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> okay. Yes, Uruguay. Oh, Uruguay. That's a pretty good ring. <laughs> that was a long conversation. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you were just saving him. That's. <laughs> okay. You have a question over there? Yes, uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. You want to know what's for lunch tomorrow? Srila <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prabhupada gave us uh, actually whole, everything that we need to go back to the spiritual world. But I don't really have any 
strong desire to return there. So what is wrong with Yeah, yeah because you don't know the benefits of returning there. You have to learn. That's why these descriptions of the spiritual world are mentioned to help us. And if you don't have enough attraction for the positive, then then we have the kicks of Maya. Maya just kicks you until you think, well, why is it so miserable here? Because it is. <laughs> what are the miseries? Birth, death, disease, and old age. <clears throat> But what is the misery for a devotee? Devotees can be happy in Krishna consciousness and serve nicely, but what is their misery? They're separated from Krishna. They want that, they want that association with the Lord again. So we have to develop that attraction for Krishna, so we want to go back to Krishna. Otherwise we have to stay in this we don't want to stay mixed devotees life after life. Sometimes in one situation, sometimes in another situation. Yeah, Sanata, you have something? No? It's a, not a, actually a question, but um, connected with the theme. Uh, mm. How is look like on the other side? It is connected with the person you see there. Uh, the Prabhupada? Yeah, that picture is there. Which picture? You see? There's a small picture there of the Oti. Oh. Ambika Padmini. Yeah. Mantra. Yeah. She just passed. Oh, really? Today? One week, two weeks ago. In one week in Mayapur. Yeah. She was mother of Dhamma Krishna. I know her well. Yes. She actually wanted to take initiation from me at one time. Mm -hmm. I, well, maybe, I think she wanted second initiation or something. She's Javatek Maharaj, second. Mm -hmm. Who? Javatek Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Something, she was coming to me for something. Yeah, I, uh, I, always, see, I always, see, always see her in my board. She would be in a wheelchair. Yes. Yeah. And Damanakrishna Prabhu, you know him? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, our mystic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, he, this is confidential, should not be going in the, in the, in the yeah. she contacted him. After she left? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's exactly what, what, what Chaitanya, there was no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. She suffered about the head, but three or four strokes. Mm -hmm. cancer. Oh. It's just purifying them from all their... Because suffering is purification. When you go through physical suffering, especially towards the end, you're burning off all your bad karma. That's why a lot of times devotees don't want to take any kind of medications because they don't want to go unconscious or numb the, numb the uh, pain because they want to burn that pain off. They burn that karma off what's left and then like that. Doctors can't understand that. <laughs> but devotees understand, yeah. 
So for a devotee, that what appears to be a lot of suffering, I mean, it is difficult. It's just preparing them for the final destination, that's all. It's worthwhile. Yeah. I, uh, coming from her, I believe it. <laughs> I mean, Dhammada Krishna, to me, is a very powerful devotee. No, not only that way. <laughs> Spir spiritually, he's also very powerful. Yeah, that way, too. We have the nation of it. That's a nice point. Thank you. So that's better than my whole class, just what was said in that one line. I'm reading from Shastra. He's, he's talking Shastra. He's showing what was called living Shastra. Okay, so we can stop here. Okay, so get your ticket for, for Goloka. Get a front row seat <laughs> on the train back to Godhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Prabhupada, the captain of the train, Kija. Hey. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya, the train itself. <laughs> Yeah, I punch it out for so beautiful.